good morning everyone. We are in Macon, Georgia and we are going to do what I would consider to be one of my mom's bucket list items. Mom, would you say that's pretty accurate? The one and only. Yes, it is. So we're going to a pretty famous house here in Macon. Days with Jordan the Lion and my mom begins now. Well, if you know your rock and roll, you know what it means when you see a gate that says, and the road goes on forever with a bunch of gigantic mushrooms. That's right, we are at the Almond Brothers Big House. So I'll tell you, my mom is one of the biggest Almond Brothers no, fans. No, wait, the biggest. <laughs> She's the biggest Almond Brothers fan probably in the world. Yes. And my introduction to the Almond Brothers band was when I got my very first guitar and I started taking guitar lessons. I came home from school one day and on my bed there was an Almond Brothers CD with a note that said, listen to the whipping post. And then when I started taking lessons and the teacher said, make a list of some acoustic songs that you'd like me to teach you. And my mom said, learn Melissa. So we had to come see the big house together today. Let's do it. Well, here it is, the big house. The band moved from Florida up here to Georgia and how they started was interesting. Dwayne Allman was one of the great guitar players, session players for the Muscle Shoals Studios and decided to start his own band. So he called his brother. So the band needed a singer and Dwayne Allman called his brother who was living in California and said, come here and be our singer. So he came here, he's actually a guitar player. When he got there, they locked him in a room and said, don't come out until you can play that organ. And the first song that he wrote while learning that organ was the Almond Brothers classic Dreams. They all lived in this house and it's been restored into a museum now. That is one excited mom to be here. <laughs> and uh, my mom was telling me that Linda Oakley was the one who found this house for him. And sadly, when Dwayne Allman would pass away, it was actually here was his last stop. He was visiting Linda for her birthday and then took off on his motorcycle. Here you can see it says, The Big House. Built in 1900, served as the communal hub from 1970 to 73 for the Allman Brothers Band. 1993, Kirk and Kirsten West made the big house their home with the dream of preserving it and their extensive memorabilia collection for fans far and wide to enjoy. 2009, the Allman Brothers Band Museum at the Big House opened and all their dreams came true. And now your dream gets to come true, doesn't it? <laughs> <She> does. <laughs> Look at that. My mom says she knows exactly where Greg's room was. She's a big Greg Allman fan. And look at the front door when you come in. They've put this stained glass there. Let's go on in. Now Dwayne was an incredible guitar player too because he used to use like a, an old pill bottle for a slide. Look at that. That's awesome. There, it's signed by Butch and Jimo. So right now you can hear they're playing the whipping post. My mom was saying that Greg wrote that in this house. He was hearing the beat and she said he kept going to the kitchen table, tapping the beat and then wrote it. Take a look at that, Butch Trucks drums. Now Butch Trucks' nephew, Derek Trucks, became the guitar player in the Allman Brothers band later on, and that's his guitar. And there he is. Look at that great painting of Dwayne. He passed away on a motorcycle, and the whole family were motorcycle riders. His mom, Greg, all of them. There's Greg Allman's jacket from Laid Back. Black velvet. Oh, nice. Look at the turquoise belt. Look at the address book. This is like a who's who. I see right away Bill Graham, Shep Gordon, Joe Galkin. Yeah, Boss Gags, who my mom made me listen to Loan Me a Dime last night because that's her. She says that's like the greatest song ever. And who plays on that, Mom? Dwayne Allman. Greg Allman's Key to the City on The Tonight Show. Check this out. Handwritten lyrics for Midnight Rider. Yeah, he has a very, very noticeable handwriting. It's all signed by Greg. I love and his lyrics from Please Call Home. 
Look at this, we are seriously going back in time. It literally goes from present all the way back and look at all that. That is incredible. Look at all the costumes and the instruments. And the guys from Government Mule at one point were in the Almond Brothers band. And uh, O'Teal, who's in the Dead and Company, he was a bass player in the Almond Brothers band. And in fact, that is O'Teal's right there. When I first saw them live, he was the bass player that was playing with them. And there he is. I love this stuff. This is amazing. Look how much stuff they have here. And I asked, I said, did you borrow anything from a museum? They said, nope. Most of the things here are privately owned by the museum or they're on loan for a personal collection, which means you're not going to be able to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and, and uh, see this stuff. you got to come here. There's Johnny Carson with the band. Look at that. And they, this was during the time Jaimo was African American, so a lot of times he couldn't stay where the band stayed. Especially in the South. With that signed by Greg Ullman down there in the bottom. And Dickie Betts. If you look at this picture of the band with Jimmy Carter and you look at Jamo over here, what he's wearing, they actually have that right here with an Almond Brothers shirt. Look at that guitar strap. <laughs> it's got the pot leaves and the ABB on it. Red Dog was their roadie. You see Red Dog on the jacket. Now if you look at that jacket, that crushed velvet jacket, that's the same one that Greg Allman's wearing in this picture right here with the car. That is awesome. That's Dickie Betts' guitar. I've never actually seen one that said Richard Betts like that before. Cool guitar though. He calls him Richard Betts in the song. Oh, I didn't know that. Richard Betts playing on, that, on his red guitar. And if you look at their amps, they covered them all in these pinto bean bags. They actually have one of the amps right down here below us. And that's their concert at Brave Stadium, which we kind of went there. <laughs> kind of. Check out the pool table. It's just loaded with old press and all access passes and notes and all kinds of things. Signed checks. You can see these bills still say almond on them. This is funny, it says uh, limousine service, bill to the Almond Brothers band picked up by Almond Brothers wives. <laughs> There's a pay stub from them being paid in 1969, $28. And they really were the first Southern rock band, technically. I mean, even Leonard Skinner used to say they got their start by finding out what the hottest Almond Brothers song was out at that time, and they would learn it, and then they would be the first band to be playing it in the area to gain a crowd. And of course, at one time, Greg Allman was married to Cher. Oh, my mom just said, oh geez, and you heard her. If Cher sees this, Cher's gonna hate me because my mom. <laughs> and that is Dickie Betts' shirt from when they played Woodstock 94. There's actually a picture of him wearing it. And from the pool table room, with all that great memorabilia, there's the front door. That's where we walked in. My mom was telling me this is this was Greg Allman's favorite photo of him and Dwayne together. That's Barry Oakley. Good point, my mom was just telling me, she said they were also kind of famous for being uh, cutting edge and having two lead guitar players and two drummers. Grateful Dead kind of did that as well, but a little bit different way. Jerry was always kind of lead. Let's move on. Oh, I see a Les Paul gold top. Who did that belong to? This is Dickie Betts, Les Paul, and it says, I knew what I wanted to do, but I couldn't quite find it when I did Jessica. Then my little daughter Jessica crawled in the room and I just started playing to her, trying to capture the feeling of her crawling and smiling, and that's why I called it Jessica. If you look up there where he sent it, it says, Dickie Betts, Good Medicine. That says, I wrote Ramblin' Man in Barry Oakley's kitchen. At about four in the morning, everyone had gone to bed, but I was sitting up. Once I got started, 
I probably wrote that song in about 20 minutes, but I'd been thinking about it for a year or two. And it just happened like that. So this is great, they have a table from H&H &H Soul Food Diner who used to feed the band early on, and it's still in business, and we're gonna go there after we go here. They have uh, an original copy of the uh, one of their original bills. There's the band eating. And she always fed them free because she said she knew that those boys someday it was gonna pay off. She's still alive and still goes into the restaurant as well, so maybe we'll get lucky and maybe we'll get a meter today, who knows. And up there with that picture of Dwayne, there's a bill also from H&H. &H. Even though there's a lot of Dickie Betts stuff in here, my mom was telling me he, he didn't actually live in the house because he was already married and he and his wife lived somewhere else. I've always loved Dickie Betts playing. Over here where the kitchen would have been, they have a bit of a gift shop because uh, the band pretty much lived upstairs, so that's where we go see their rooms. Well, tour guide, would you like to go look at the bedrooms now? I'm ready. Check this out. This is a picture of Barry Oakley sitting on the side of the steps with his daughter. And look at where the front door and everything is. That is right there. All right, let's go upstairs and take a look. Isn't that crazy? Look at all the childhood photos of everybody. These are all, you know, these are the families that would have lived in this house. And that's why they called the album Brothers and Sisters because it really was a brother and sisterhood. So here on the far left, that's Greg and Dwayne's mom. And then right next to her is Mama Louise who owns the restaurant we're gonna go to. Take a look in that closet. Just nothing but guitar cases. I love that. It's a great touch. So this room that we're entering now, that we've been looking around in, this was uh, Dwayne's daughter's room, Gladrielle's room originally, it says. And uh, it became later known as the road crew room, where the roadies would sleep. Look at all the uh, memorabilia. Old unused backstage passes. Old guitar strings, picks. Now here is Greg Allman's room that he shared with Barry Oakley's sister when he was dating her, so this was Greg's room. Holy cow, mom what do you think? You're in Greg's bedroom. <laughs> you feeling it? Is he here? No, I think he's left the building. They've got some of JMO's stage wear here, as well as a uh, letter from Jimmy Carter. <laughs> and those are master recording tapes from the Allman Brothers recording of Sail Away and Can't Take It With You in 1978. Look at Dickie Betts' guitar. Not only is the guitar cool, but then this is kind of a strange thing to have in here. He's got a necklace of teeth. <laughs> Wacky. And the display inside the closet is um, from Warren Haynes of Government Mule when he was, he was originally before Derek Trucks came in to play Dwayne's parts in the Almond Brothers Band. It was uh, Warren Haynes. Take a look at that, that is awesome. And Almond Brothers with Grateful Dead concert shirts. Whoa, in 73. Wow, look at. <laughs> That would have been the time to be going to concerts back then that Bill Graham was setting up. I mean, come on. Crosby, Stills, and Nash, the Allman Brothers Band, Pink Floyd, Gordon Lightfoot, Black Sabbath, Alice Cooper, <laughs> Led Zeppelin, Donovan, Grand Funk, Jeff Beck, oh my gosh, The Who. Yep, and Jimmy Carter was a fan, a big fan. Greg's Fireplace. And my mom was telling me, she said, you know, it looks really nice now, but when they lived here, it was not, it was not as nice and fixed up. It was kind of a, an affordable dump they could all live in. Here we go, we're gonna go to Dwayne's room, right here. 
As soon as you walk in and go to the left where the closet was, you can see some of Dwayne's original clothing. Look at that. Whole shrine to him. And one of his, it looks like to me a Les Paul Jr., I think. Called Little Red. His guitar, Little Red, and look at that case. Nice and worn out. Some of his shoes down there in the bottom. And the reason that picture is back there in the back of Dwayne fishing is because he's wearing those shoes that I just showed you right there. And as we look around the room, this is where Dwayne would have slept. There's Dwayne holding his daughter. And that was his girlfriend at the time, Donna. Look at this, it's a New Year's resolution card. It says, this year I will be more thoughtful of my fellow man. Exact more effort in each of my endeavors professionally as well as personally. Take love wherever I find it and offer it to everyone who will take it. In this coming year, I will seek knowledge from those who wish or who are wiser than me and try to teach those who wish to learn from me. I love being alive and I will be the best man I possibly can. Dwayne Allman. Wow, sorry about my stumbling, but wow. That's pretty powerful. I love being alive and I'll be the best man I possibly can. This is really neat. They have um, some of the awards to Dwayne as well as a statue of Dwayne right there. But I love this. They have his Corsidon bottle and a uh, little ring. The more, the more I looked into it, this is not just Dwayne's guitar. That's Dwayne's first guitar. That is rad. Now what's crazy is if you look at the case, it says Delaney and Bramlett. Dwayne actually pawned this guitar and got rid of it and uh, Delaney bought it not knowing that it was <laughs> not knowing that it had been Dwayne's and he used it so that's why the, the case has his band sticker on it that's really cool so this was Linda and Barry Oakley's daughter's room and um, they said one of the interesting things about this is if you look in the closet the little yellow dress is the one that she's wearing on the Brothers and Sisters album. And then look right above. And they said that this room was actually um, completely recreated by Linda and Brittany Oakley. So it's a, as exact as it probably could be for the time. Now, let's check out this. So this was Barry Oakley and Linda Oakley's bedroom and you can see pretty much right out to the street from here And of course like the last room we saw Linda recreated this exactly and the uh, the jeans that are in that closet that we're gonna see are Barry's jeans that she customly created for him So those would have been those jeans right there a lot of their clothes, a lot of his clothes. Look at his other jeans, they have like a heart on them. I think she did a lot of his custom stuff. She created all that for him. And that's Linda and Brittany. A little desk in here. Man, they did a great job of this. Especially, I love the fact that they got the actual people that lived in this house to come back and help recreate it for the fans. So here we've got the shared upstairs bathroom that connects the two rooms. So connects Barry and Linda's room to the next room we're gonna go into. So the room that connects from where the bathroom was right over there into here, I looked and I said, oh, this is the smoke and pot room, I'm guessing. Then I looked it up and it's, it was called the meditation relaxation room, music listening room. So they basically came in here, listened to records, hit that bad boy. And, uh, and they said, take special note of the shower with seven heads so holy cow look at that full body blast and then from sitting here on the sofa this is what you would have had across from you 
Who are you after going into here? Live sound. And they had a little balcony out here too. Right outside the music room. Probably smoked a lot of cigarettes out there. And this is an Eat a Peach tribute guitar. It's kind of interesting. Check this out. There's a picture of Greg and his son, Devin. That's a really great watercolor of Dwayne. So now as we make our way out, we're gonna go down and we're gonna check out all the memorabilia in the front room. There's Greg standing on the steps. And if you're wondering about how Dwayne and Barry died, we're gonna go into that tomorrow. That's what we're gonna vlog tomorrow. Look at all that. Great painting from Live at the Fillmore. Take a look at that. That's Greg's organ. And there he is playing it. Same one. That is really neat. Look at that. And then this is incredible. Look at all this tribute to when they did Live at the Fillmore East. You can see the band name on there, Making Georgia. And I was asking my mom, I said, why did they move here if like the brothers and the mom and everybody, they lived in Daytona? She said it was because, um, she thought it was because they, they went and joined Capitol, or not Capitol, Capricorn. Capricorn Recording was here and that's where they recorded a lot of that early stuff, so. Makes sense. J-Lo, Johnny Johnson. And those are Butch Trucks drums. Picture him down there on them. And then this is really cool. This is um, on the letterhead of the Fillmore Management and it's from, signed Bill Graham, and it's Bill Graham's introduction in 1971 to the Almond Brothers Band. It says, the last few days we've had the privilege of working with this particular group and in the past year or so, we've had them on both coasts a number of times. And in all that time, I've never heard the kind of music that this group plays. And last night, we had the good fortune of having them get on stage about 2.30, 3 o'clock, and they walked out of here 7 o'clock in the morning. And it's not that they just played quantity. And for my amateur ears and all my life, I've never heard the kind of music that this group plays. The finest contemporary music. We're going to round it off with the best of them all, the Allman Brothers Band. And that was actually Barry Oakley's Fillmore East shirt from the concerts. Yeah, check this out. They have a lot of different memorabilia, including uh, hourglass. And my mom was saying when they were in high school, they went by the Almond Joys. The Romans, Phil Walden, his name down, is down here at the bottom. He's the guy that ran Capricorn. And then of course, because of Dwayne's contribution at fame, that's where they nicknamed him the Sky Dog. See, there's an old flyer for the Almond Joys. So Greg and Dwayne have been playing together their whole life. And this contract's really great. It's a, an agency contract at the bottom. It's signed. Howard Allman of the Allman Joys. Howard Dwayne Allman. Look at that. That's kind of a rarity. And then here's a sign date by 10 of when Dwayne was in the escorts in Daytona Beach. You can see down at the bottom it says the area code and everything. And uh, you can see Dwayne and Greg right up there. It looks like Greg and Dwayne both were guitar players in that band. Check out all these old seven inch records. The Almond Joys, The Second Coming, The Hourglass. That's really cool. Check out the Hourglass is playing with the real Moby Grape. I love Moby Grape. So this room that we've been in was the, uh, the band rehearsal room. I figured I'd show you around first and then let you in on where we actually were. How cool is that? You're standing in the room where they wrote Hotlanta. <laughs> You feel the magic of Greg? Look at all that memorabilia, that is so cool. That was Barry Oakley's shirt. And then check this out. This jacket right here was Dwayne Allman's jacket and his gold top Les Paul. And that jacket, take a good, good look because he's wearing it up in the self-titled album cover. 
That is really cool to see. So I mentioned that Dwayne used to play slide with instead of actually buying a slide or using a metal one, he would use a coarse Sidden bottle. And that's what those are. It's funny, when I was learning guitar, my teacher was telling me about this and he goes, you know what's crazy? We used to have those laying around the house all the time growing up. Now they're collector's items. There's Dwayne playing his gold top. And there's that same exact gold top Les Paul right there. There's an early Allman Brothers press photo and them, I guess, taking a bath in the river along with a postcard written out to Jerry Wexler from Dwayne. So I don't know what that part was all about, but here it says, uh, Dear Jerry, thanks for your help, guidance, confidence, but most of all your friendship. Love to you and yours always, Dwayne Allman. And there's a check written out to Howard Dwayne Allman signed by Greg Allman from the Allman Brothers account. And a check to Barry Oakley. So the song playing right over top of us now is what's on the lyrics right in front of us here that are from their handwritten notebook, 1970. That's the notebook, that's not a copy or anything. And look at the, all the guitar picks and everything on top of the amp. God, that is so cool. Love this kind of stuff. Look at that. The shirt that Dwayne's wearing in both of these photos is this shirt right here. Back there in the 70s. And then look at that Les Paul. That was also his Les Paul that he's playing in the same photo. Man, that is rad. Let's see on the side of the drum, it says Almond Brothers Make in Georgia. There's a really bizarre story about this album cover, and I don't remember all the details, but a friend of mine sent it to me, and the story behind this was that um, they were unloading things, and I guess one of the members of the band had a bag of cocaine, and he was kind of like sneaking it in, into his pocket or whatever, so that's what they were all kind of laughing about was, was like, well, I guess whatever was going on right before this. Now that I think about it, I think what the story was, was I think that they were waiting for their drug dealer to drop something off, and he dropped it off right before then, so they went to take the photo and they snuck it in their pocket real quick and they were all laughing about it or something like that. I'll have to double check that. Well, I never thought I'd be here, guys. This is so amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is the room where you first walk in. Amazing. Take a look at that. There's Greg and his best friend. Yeah. Chink. Right there in front of those same gates that we started in front of. There's Dwayne's daughter, Gladrielle. They had one necklace left with Greg's guitar string, made out of Greg's guitar string, so I bought it for my mom. What an experience. Now let's go to H&H. &H. I can't believe I had to fight her to let me buy her a necklace. She's arguing about how expensive it is, but it's literally the only one they had left, so it's hers now. Well, very appropriately located here on Dwayne Allman Memorial Boulevard is what we're looking for. Well, we've made it to H&H, &H and look at what their logo is. It's the big old Allman Brothers mushroom. Mama Louise Hudson and Inez Hill fed rock stars within these walls. Heck yeah, they did. Eat a biscuit for peace. Here it is. Not just the Allman Brothers Band. Also Otis Redding and many, many others. Johnny Taylor. Yeah, Otis Redding's from Macon, so the walls are covered. Mama Louise. This place is amazing. Look at how they decorated it. I mean, come on, it didn't get any better than that. Not for us, anyway. There she is. There she is wearing her Almond Brother shirt. My mom actually called yesterday and asked if I could interview her and they said, well, even though she's a bit older, she's got a pretty active social life, so we can't guarantee she'll be there. She'll be here, so I don't think she is, but look at this, it says, mind your own biscuits and life will be gravy. All right, we got our menu. Now I heard that they have some of the uh, dishes named after some of the musicians. Let's check it out. Here you've got the Jimmy Hall, you've got the Midnight Rider, you've got the Red Dog up here, the Sky Dog, the JMO. All right, this is kind of inadvertently bucket list number two because you've been talking about this place forever. So I'm going to break my diet pretty hardcore to try all this southern food in this place. Soul food. Now I told her when I ordered this I wasn't going to eat it all, but I wanted to try because this is like such a famous place. So I got deviled eggs, meatloaf, <laughs> chicken and dumplings, and mac and cheese. They have like a, a thing where you can get like two two main courses and two sides, so I'll take some to go. Well, I ate the meatloaf. It was amazing, and, and in a total twist of irony, Melissa, 
one of our favorite Almond Brothers songs came on. Well, we are done. What a great meal. It's cool. They were telling us that this used to be back in the kitchen and that Mama used to keep it there because if, uh, if people didn't have money to pay, then they could wash the dishes. All right, my friends. We're going to call it a day on this vlog. Come back and see us tomorrow where we show you a little bit more Almond Brothers sad history, unfortunately. But now if you're ever in Macon, Georgia, you know exactly where to eat. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great night and we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you Mrs. Nelson for becoming my newest Patreon and have a good night. Goodbye.